Welcome both of you. Uh, it's a pleasure you. to have you here. Um, Ed, why did you become a vegan? How long ago was that? Yeah, so I've been vegan now for about three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a documentary called Earthlings, and it basically summarises all the different ways that we exploit animals. It talks about dairy and eggs and all the horrible things that we do to them in commercial farming systems. And I felt like a hypocrite because I said I loved animals. You know, I always said that I was an animal lover, but here I was paying for animals to suffer and die on my behalf. And so I felt that I'd hit some sort of moral brick wall where I preached one thing, but my actions said another mm -hmm. thing. And so I I had to be vegan to align myself with my own moral code. You know, yeah. We're in a nation of animal lovers. It makes sense for us to extend that compassion to all animals. Mm -hmm. And how far are you prepared to, to take that? That's an interesting question. I think, I, I personally, I believe in education and I want to talk about veganism as much as possible because mm -hmm. knowledge is power. And when we're given both sides of the argument, we can make a conscious decision based on how we truly feel about the situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, for so long, we've been fed the same kind of propaganda of you need meat for protein, you need you know, dairy, cow's milk for, for calcium, but actually this isn't true. And when we can kind of level the playing field and put across what's actually happening to animals, mm -hmm. the terrible suffering that they go through and the environmental damage that it causes to our whole planet, I think when people have that power, they're more compelled and empowered to make informed decisions. Are you militant? I, well, it's, militant's an interesting word. I stand up for what I believe in, and I speak it, and I preach it, and I do it uh, hopefully in a way that I believe to be effective. How far will you go? How far will I go? I mean, this sounds like a loaded question. I've never... Well, it is a loaded question, because <laughs> exactly. obviously we're talking... We're going to talk about the, 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 the militant vegans, and we'll use that word, you say yeah. you don't really like it, but uh, who will take it to the extreme? Who will be violent? Who will be offensive? Who will be, frankly, quite right. frightening? Right, so uh, violence, of course, is never on the table. We don't condone violence in any, any way, shape or form. Offence is a very unique thing. It's very subjective. I'm personally offended by people who exploit animals. However, my offence to that isn't necessarily a good enough justification for them just to stop. So we have to not be so concerned about offence but concerned about justice and what's happening to animals the fact that pigs are in gas chambers screaming right this very second the fact that dairy cows have been forced to be impregnated and their babies have been taken away from them the fact that we macerate and gas 40 million day old male chicks every single year in the egg industry just because they won't produce eggs that's truly an abhorrent and offensive action that we all commit on a daily basis right well Ju julie you think you think this has gone to the extreme now, don't you? You said, you said here you think veganism is preachy and a middle-class thing. Well, this is probably the last thing that you want to hear with the debate, but I agree with every single word that Ed says. Mm. Um, I think that it's absolutely right and proper that we look at what's happening to animals, that we challenge um, intensive farming. I don't have a problem with killing animals for meat, but I think that as long as they've lived well and die humanely, if there's a possible... Um, if there's a possibility for that, then I think that what we should be doing is targeting the agribusiness and looking at large-scale farming. But my issue is the way that a number of vegans, and I'm not suggesting that Ed is one of these, but a number of vegans will espouse this kind of sanctimonious um, dribble about how it's no more expensive, it's no more time-consuming, it's as easy. For example, low-income mothers who have three children under the age of five who need to feed those children, and it is cheaper and easier, much as I don't like that fact, uh, to, to give these children fast food, meat-based diets. If every single low-income parent had a box delivered to them of good organic plant-based food that they could then easily prepare for their children in the middle of a busy working day, I would absolutely condone it and say yes, more of it. But we can't deny the fact that many vegans who are sanctimonious and who judge lower income, particularly women who are raising their children, uh, that, they, that they are coming from a position of privilege and denying how difficult it is to have and to provide a balanced diet for your family in today's climate of expense uh, and cheap and easy available meat. The last time you were on here was in January, and after what you said on here, um, you had death threats, you had mm -hmm. rape threats. Mm -hmm. um, so the issue you have is, I mean, you're, you're both, you know, sort of singing from the same hymn sheet mostly, but it's when it crosses that line and becomes frightening. Well, I mean, who could argue against being um, more conscious about the effect that our meat and dairy eating has on the planet and on the animals that suffer as a consequence? But what I found, and I first wrote an article about this in 2005, which was a tongue-in-cheek article about how people are constantly lectured by vegetarians and vegans who seem to think that their lifestyle choice 
and they do nothing else, they do no campaigning against the meat industry, but just the very fact that they have this diet, um, you know, becomes unbearable. Now, I had lots of, of death and rape threats. I still get emails uh, to this day from people who seem to support the PETA view, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, mm -hmm. which, in my view, is a deeply misogynistic organisation that thinks it's fine to treat women as animals, but we need to treat animals humanely. And that is the big problem I have. And, yes, after I came on the programme in January, you know, I was called all the horrendous misogynistic names under the sun by some macho... Um, brokerists, as we call them, vegans, some men who seem to think that this is the new macho and we can see this in the way that some men are trying to pull others into veganism by showing that they can be big bodybuilders and that they can have massive muscles and that they're like junk food made of vegan ingredients. It's just a kind of a, a swap for their usual kind of, you know, meat eating and steak eating into a, now a macho veganism. So your reaction to that, uh, those extreme responses yeah. on social media as well? Of course, yeah. I mean, I don't condone those at all, but, I mean, the thing is, it kind of happens on both sides. And I myself, being on social media, I receive death threats on a, on, on a pretty much a daily basis. I mean, the issue is it's such a divisive topic mm. and people feel so passionate on either side. And I think we've got because to be... You, because you are a vegan, sorry. Uh, and because I advocate online and right. because I'm very vocal in my veganism, right. I get death threats from farmers. I get death threats from non-vegans who are just opposed to what it is that I'm doing. And so it's an issue that exists on both sides. And it's not an issue from a vegan perspective, mm -hmm. it's just an issue from probably like a societal perspective. Right. When, you, uh, when you see um, protests and occasionally scuffles yeah. uh, outside abattoirs and farms and yeah. butchers, um, do, do you think that if the, if the point... The, does the point have to be made to people walking down the street so scarily mm -hmm. um, that, that... I mean, I am, I'm one of those people that, you know, sort of I'll listen to any argument, but the, but, but the more militant you are, the more I'll back away Absolutely. from you. So, you know, if I... If, you know, make me that angry, if you frighten me that much, I will eat a sausage. Right, and it's, <laughs> but, that's, but it's a psychological thing, right, when people get pushed away when they feel that, that view has been pushed upon them, and that's why education is so important. We just need to look at the statistics, and that, I think that's what's so powerful. So a study was released by Oxford University just earlier this year, mm. a five-year study that looked at the damage of farming to our environment, and they concluded exclusively proved that actually if, we, if the world adopts the plant-based diet, we could save the amount of agricultural land we need by 75%. Now, The Guardian also published another, um, an article, and it was talking about how to avoid rising two degrees from a global warming temperature point of view. In the UK, we have a responsibility, therefore, to reduce our beef, pig and lamb consumption by 90% and our dairy consumption by 60%. These are statistics that are not coming from vegans. But, Ed, yeah. there's another issue to that. I mean, the, the fact that we now seem to be awash with avocados, you can't escape avocados. Mm -hmm. means that the Brazilian rainforest has suffered because of the overproduction. If you look at quinoa, the new trendy food of the white middle classes in this country and elsewhere in Western Europe, Peruvian people, for whom that was their staple, now find that it's tripled in price. So there is another way that we need yeah. to tackle this. Isn't, and it, isn't, it, isn't it the fact that by merely having human beings on the planet... There, it, whether it is whether it's avocado farming yeah. or quinoa or cows or beef, there is going to be an impact. Of course there is, but uh, the way I see it is that our responsibility in life is to make sure the planet that we leave behind is better than the planet that we were born into. I mean, we mm -hmm. have an obligation to reduce suffering as mm -hmm. much as we possibly mm -hmm. can in our lives. Now, we can never obliterate suffering, but we must reduce it as much as we can. And simply going vegan is the simplest, big, sing, the single biggest thing that we can do that has the biggest impact not only to our environment, but to the trillions of animals who are exploited every every single year needlessly. It's completely needless. But I think the point is, how far are you prepared yeah. to go? How far will you personally... I mean, what do, what do you say to those... Uh, Mark says, I run an abattoir, I've been targeted by vegans who abused me and my staff, took photos of them, posted them on social media with the wording, murdering paedophiles written oh across them. Do you, do you uh, agree with that? Absolutely not. Of course I don't. Likewise, I don't agree with people sending me messages insinuating that I'm somehow a, an animal abuser or into bestiality simply because I want to save the lives of animals. Mm. This is the thing, it works both ways, mm. but we have to look at who the true victim is. And it's not people that are necessarily having bad things said about them on social media. The true victim of the animals were having their lives taken from them. They're mutilated, they're forcibly impregnated, they're exploited, they suffer, they scream and beg for mercy, and we grant them nothing. Mm -hmm. They are the oppressed majority in our society, and the least that we can do is give them some compassion and say they should have the right to live their life. Final couple of seconds. I would like the vegan movement to campaign to make this diet more accessible to people from lower incomes and to take away the elitist slant on veganism, mm -hmm. and that is the responsibility of all of us. I'm going to leave it there. Thank, yeah, you. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you very much. I've that all day.